Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our world map project. Hi. We have Keenan here working the cameras. Hello. And I love this project because it's just color transitions and really embracing the wet on wet and the color and the playing and the mixing, it'll be good. We're gonna do this project in two steps. Our very first one is we will be doing um, just color transitions across the continents. And then the second step is just doing these small little areas that are kind of off the coast. Fine. We will be using two paint brushes around two and around six. These are our go-to brushes. Um, I love them. So if you need to start anywhere and you're not sure where to start, start with these two brushes and a butcher tray palette. It's perfect for mixing. We'll be doing a lot of color mixing and we'll be using three colors. Our first color is deep blue. Our second color is deep yellow and our third color is magenta. We are using Let's Make Art watercolor cold pressed paper. It is not 100% cotton paper, but I think it works well with the liquid watercolors. It's great paper. And whole line soft tape, just to tape our paper down. Okay, let's start with our oath, and then we will get to painting. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Ding! <laughs> Keenan was our ding today. I've misplaced the ding. Well, as you can see, we're in a little bit of a new space. True. So our bell is in the old space. It's getting some stuff done to it. And we just are in another location today. Mm -hmm. We're making it work. It's very exciting. It is. Let's go. <laughs> I had nothing else to say. I didn't know what to say at the end of that. <laughs> All right. I already transferred my outline to my paper. Um, but if you've never done that before, all you need to do is tape your outline to the top, put your graphite paper dark shiny side down, and when you make a mark, it will transfer onto your paper, okay? Um, let's get started. So our very first area, we will be switching from a deep blue to kind of like a lime green. So you can start with your six or your two, whatever's easier. And I'm gonna grab some deep blue. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull straight from kind of like where it pools, get that dark color. And then along this edge, I'm just gonna do deep blue along this edge, okay? And after I do a little chunk of this color, I'm gonna spread that color out and then I'm gonna rinse my brush, hit it off the side of my cup so it's not dripping, and just pull the color. Ooh, that looks good. And I like doing it this way because you, we are getting a value transition just by adding water. And that's the wonderful thing about watercolor. So I'm just gonna kind of keep pulling this color until it gets to like a barely there blue. Now by the time I get to kind of this right hand side, in my palette, I'm gonna take a little bit of my deep blue, a little bit of my yellow, And create a green and we're going to just drop in this green along this edge here and you can see the area is wet so it's just kind of spreading and moving and I'm gonna let it do its thing I'm not gonna try and control it too much okay and then I'm gonna just keep adding yellow to this green mixture so the green itself is gonna have a color transition Now, if you want, see how there's kind of like this edge right here? Yeah. You can leave that, embrace the watercolor, appreciate it for what it does. Or if you kind of want to work that blending a little bit more, you can just move your paintbrush back and forth across this area and let that green transition into the blue a little bit better. Did you have any rhyme or reason to the colors you chose for this? Not really, no. Cool. That's fun. <laughs> wow. Nope. But... If anything, that gives you guys an opportunity to change it. So if you're looking at this and you're like, I wanna do this all in this certain color scheme, go for it. Yeah. Like this is your painting, this is your life. You get to make all of those decisions and I support you in them. Okay, so 
at this point, so I'm gonna add a little bit more green along the top here, and then I kinda of want it to be like pure yellow by the time I get to this area. So I'm just gonna grab deep yellow, and kind of along here. So I'm gonna start putting that in. Go along the edge. I know sometimes we look at projects and we think, oh, that's simple, but sometimes the simplest project, the most straightforward project is the best way to practice technique. And I feel like this is an excellent way to practice your color transitions and your blending. And you can even move, I'm kind of moving the green that's up here down into this little area a little bit. See that? Yeah, it's fun. Also, the wet on wet can't be beat. Yeah. You know, it's just a good technique right there. And I really want this side to have a little, I feel like this is all one color, one value too much. So to kind of like bring in some interest, I'm going to just drop a little bit of green along here. Okay. And then as this dries, it's going to change. You're going to get some different edges. You're going to get some blooms. We embrace those. You, the wonderful thing about watercolor is that it does a lot of things for you and so much of learning watercolor is to embrace them instead of fight them. And once you can get to that step, then this whole world is opened up to you of how you can play. So as I'm moving, I'm seeing how this green, you know how I kind of like was blending it out? You see how it moved up here into this blue a little yeah. bit? Beautiful. Oh, it's just beautiful. Okay. I like how you said the whole world is opened up to you. Yeah, oh, and we're doing the uh, world the map. World. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna move to South America, and I'm going to start with yellow and then kind of transition it to orange. So, on my palette here, I have, can they see this right edge? Not fully. Here, A let me flip bit it. More. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so we have yellow here, and we have magenta on this side, so I'm gonna pre-mix some orange. I'm just gonna put some of my deep yellow and my magenta together. Now I have this gorgeous orange and like a gorgeous gold. And then maybe on the very tip we do some magenta. So I'm kind of trying to get this color transition. Mm -hmm. Rinse my brush, grab some yellow, and just kind of continue on my way. So I like to do my yellow edge. Rinse your brush, hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping and pull that color. And then at this point, I can grab a little bit of that orange that I've already mixed and just kind of drop it in. Now, if you are a little bit heavy handed with your water where you are seeing like a puddle on your paper, one thing that you can do is after you rinse it and hit it off the side of the cup, blot it on your paper towel a little bit. That paper towel will absorb all of that excess water, so you will not have, when you go to your paper, you won't have so much water on your brush. And if you're fairly new to watercolor and you're really struggling with that water to paint ratio, that is so common. So don't feel like watercolor isn't for you just because you struggle with it. It takes a lot of time and practice to get used to the feel of how much ratios you should have on your brush. Okay. And I'm just gonna, for a little bit of variation, I'm gonna drop in some darker orange along this edge here. And maybe I'll drop a little bit of magenta. And I'm just letting it move. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, on to the next one. We're gonna start with orange and then transition to a nice like magenta pink. So if you need to mix a little bit more orange, go for it. I love that South America one. Yeah, isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. And I love that little light value right in there as that orange is moving. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this dark orange again. I'm going dark on the edge. Rinsing my brush, hitting it off the side of the cup, blot it on your paper towel if you need to, 
and just kind of using water to spread it out. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of just magenta, but I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. And the reason for that is I want a hint of magenta, not like super dark magenta. I'm saving the dark value magenta for the right hand side. So here we're kind of just trying to mix almost like a peachy color. And I'm just kind of working my way around the little dots in there. I believe those are lakes. Oh wow, those are huge. That's why there's like, like here you can see, that's up probably where Michigan is, where all those lakes are. Okay, and now that I've kind of done this like light pink, I'm gonna take, like drop my six or two, whatever's easier for you to use, right into there to get all of that paint. And then along this edge, we're gonna let it go. Ooh, yep. That's the ticket. And if you kind of want to like blend it out, you can. If you don't want to, don't. Like this is yours. And so much of creating is trusting your own decisions. And I know the funny thing about that is that's the hardest part. But I want to tell you that your choices of what did I just make up a line? Yep, I didn't paint it all the way. <laughs> That's funny. Um, your choices as an artist are just as valid as mine. And I think that we're scared to like go at things with such confidence because we're new, but that's what being an artist is. And that's the freedom of it. That's the magic of it, is you get to make all of those decisions. But learning to trust yourself is hard. It's a process just like painting. It's a process and it takes practice. It's a practice that you can improve on over time, just like building up your watercolor skills. Look at how pretty that edge is. Oh, Oof, love it. And I just, what I like to do sometimes, so even though this is orange right here and I love that orange, it's a great orange. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll drop in another hue and it will just add to that vibrancy. So in this orange area, I'm gonna grab deep yellow and just kind of along that side. See how that just kind of like oh, wow. brightens that up? It's still Whoa. reading as orange, but it's kind of like a brighter orange. Yeah, it's way warmer. Yeah. Okay. We're moving on, keep on keeping on. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the magenta where it's kind of darkest right here and it's actually gonna transition into a purple and a blue and a green. And the other really wonderful thing about this project or, or playing with this is color wheel and color theory is kind of a beast and it's really hard to understand how to mix colors and things like that. But for me, so much, there's basically two things you need to know in color mixing. You need to know what colors are next to each other. So if they mix, they kind of smoothly transition. And then the colors that are opposite each other. And if you know that, then it's so much easier to go about painting. So for me, we know that if you were to think of a rainbow or a color wheel, the colors would go um, red or pink to purple, to blue, to green, to yellow, to orange, to red. And it would just kind of repeat like that. So then as you're doing these color transitions, kind of go in that order. Now, if you want to mix a neutral, then you know that you would mix colors that are not next to each other. So if I were to try and mix some green in with this red or magenta, it's going to turn brown. So um, you can use that to avoid some certain colors, or if you're trying to mix neutrals, dark values, browns, blacks, you can use that information to mix those colors. And the, I mean, like for me, I feel like at its base, that's what you need to know with colors. Cool. So we're gonna start with magenta. And I'm just gonna go along here. I'm gonna use that same pink and then 
rinse my brush, kind of spread this color out. And let's say you're spreading this color out and you're like, man, there's still so much pink, but I want to transition to another color already. How do I do that? If I keep moving this color, the whole thing is going to be pink. What you can do is rinse your brush, hit it off your paper towel and lift and kind of go in the opposite direction. Okay. And now that's a lighter value with a sweet edge with a beautiful edge and grab a little bit of purple and kind of start throwing that into the mix. So you can kind of decide where your colors transition. Do you see what I mean by that? Like I decided to have my purple start transitioning here, but I could have just as well decided that my purple starts transitioning here. You can make those decisions. You don't have to let the paint and the water dictate that to you. You can lift paint off. You can start moving the color in one area so it starts to move that color right there instead of waiting for that color to be like done. Does that make sense? Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm actually gonna mix magenta. Can they still see my mixing? Yep. And a little bit of blue, just a little bit. So it's just the hint, excuse me, the hint of a more purpley color. Oh, look so vibrant. So beautiful. I'm just kind of dropping it in. And then we can rinse our brush, hit it off the side and use water. Oh gosh, I love that color. And don't stress if like your edges aren't perfect. We're not going for perfection here. Okay, and now a little bit more magenta, a little bit more blue. Ooh, too much blue. You see how purple that went? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that alone and mix a new pile and I'll use that one later on. Mm. Efficient, nice. Okay, kind of in this area. Oh gosh, I cannot get over that color. <gasps> And then at this point, this is where I can grab more of that purple that I mixed and bring that to the, to the paint party. Use water and blend. Okay, so at this point, I'm like, whoa, I got a lot of pink going on right here. I really feel like I wanna start transitioning to kind of that more purple color. So I'm gonna do this just that. I picked up purple, I'm gonna put it in right there. And I love how those magenta slight mixed with the blue, they look split right there. Yeah. So now this is like straight purple, right? And I need to start, I need to really get to blue. But I gotta do this up, this part up here. Don't forget the little, we can always go back and adjust these, so don't stress if you leave them, but. Sometimes it's easier just to do it while you're there. Okay, I feel like I want this edge to be a little bit darker. Yeah, I'm getting this really cool bloom right here. Yeah, it's sweet. I'm gonna embrace that. Okay, so now I have this purple mixture. I'm gonna add more blue to that purple mixture. And put that in right here. Go along the edge, spread it up. And you see, I'm using the side of my brush for like the middle area where it's nice and wide because I'm getting a wide brush stroke when I do that. And then when I go along the actual edge, I am using a vertical hold. So I'm just using the tip of my paintbrush. And then when I go more towards the middle where I got to fill in that space back to kind of holding it more on its on a horizontal hold. Now I'm going to grab just straight blue. And you can just let that watercolor move, do its do its thing. 
Embrace it. And this is a simple project. That's fun though, isn't it? I know, I love it. This is great. Actually, one year for Mother's Day, um, this was when I was a college student and just kind of starting out on my artistic, like, I mean, I was in, I was an art major, but in terms of like creating my own like illustrations and that kind of thing. And I made Mother's Day cards where I did a multicolored map and then I put a little heart next to where we lived and then a heart next to where um, they lived if they weren't next to each other cool. or something like that. And I just wrote like, home is wherever you are, or home is where mom is or something uh -huh. like that. It was a little Mother's Day card. So there's a lot of really fun things that you can do. Okay, I'm gonna transition to green. So I'm gonna flip my palette back to my kind of green, yellow, blue side. Grab my blue, grab a little bit of this green and start to... Now this color you can see I left because I want this to transition into like a pink. So I'm gonna leave, make this go a little bit pink so it moves this way. But again, this is your painting. some of that vibrant green, add some yellow to it to really brighten that up. And let's say even like, man, this value feels very even. There's not a lot of variation in my value. You can just lift up to boop, hmm. lift up, boop. And now it's lighter. And then I'm gonna add some warmth here. I just really love dropping in that yellow and an orange or a green. It really just adds so much. I feel like my green and my blue need a little bit more. Blending? Yeah, blending variation. So I'm just gonna kinda work on that area a little bit more. So I dropped in some dark value, rinsed my brush, and I'm just gonna work this area. Now, I don't wanna work it too much because then I'll go towards that pink purple. That's where you're gonna get some muddy colors. So when you're blending green into your blue, you wanna keep it in that blue and try not to mix it any further than that. If you're getting close to an edge where you're just like, if I keep going this way, it's gonna mix, just push the color the other way. So instead of keep making this green go this way, I'm pushing the blue this way. See? Yes. That way you can kind of control that, where that color goes. This would be a really cool project to combine a little bit of lettering with. <gasps> yes. And maybe label, either label the areas yeah, you can paint like a big one of these. You can even mark where you've been. Mm -hmm. Okay, I actually feel really good about that color transition. Yeah, me that too. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, and but here I need to kind of go back to that like pink purple color so then this can transition to a pink orange. So I'm rinsing my brush, grabbing my six. I still have my pink purple here. And I'm gonna actually bring that in over here. So I'm going along this bottom edge, rinse your brush, hit it off the side of your cup or your paper towel and use just water. Okay. Let's grab some. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to my two for these smaller areas. Now just straight magenta. Now on these really small, you might not be able to get that value or color transition, that's okay. Don't stress. We're gonna do pink, 
rinse, blend that color out. I had a little bit of purple in my brush, so I'm making sure that that's gone. And you can see what's still in your brush. If when you rinse your brush and hit it on your paper towel, see how there's a little bit of purple right there, mm -hmm. right in that. It's probably right where it's connecting to the ferrule. So sometimes you just gotta like work it, work it out. Oh, I tried not to do that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now let's get just, there we go. Now there's that bright pink. And then we can flip. Grab some of that orange. Blend it out. And then let's just like go crazy. Mm -hmm. That look, I love that color. Me too. Oh man, that's nice. Let's just do some straight yellow just for some saturation. Mm. We'll do a little bit of orange down here off this. Okay. That is step one. And now step two, we're going to go back and address some of these smaller little bits. Ooh, I forgot. <laughs> totally didn't do that chunk. And if you wanted to like make some edges darker to really kind of do that value, full value shift, you can. So. Just go, you can, we can start on this side. We're gonna do just straight yellow over here. And I'm gonna use my two for this because these are just baby marks. I had a little drop on my paintbrush. Sometimes you, like your paintbrush will just hold water, especially where it connects to the um, ferrule. And it will, when you like go to put it, that water drop will just like drop down out of your brush. <laughs> when that happens, I just take a little piece of clean paper towel, pick it up, and then it's gone. Huh. No big deal. Okay. And this one, let's do that magenta orange color. It's just fabulous. It's mm -hmm. so good. Maybe on this little bigger piece, I can add some water to that, get some value transition. Drop a yellow in there. Okay. Now, if you're looking at a world map and you know your geography <laughs> and you're like, something is missing. Or, you know, where's New Zealand? You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Feel free to add it. Or if you're just like, I know the shape of the bottom of this continent or country fairly well, and that is not it, you go ahead and change it. <laughs> you go ahead and do what you think is right, and I will support you in that. Um, I am not strong in any of those categories, and so for me, I'm like, it's a map. That's exactly, I was gonna ask you to tell us each continent as you <sighs> painted it. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to be nice today. And that was the one rule before we started filming, Keenan. <laughs> Don't point to anywhere on this map. Don't and ask bring me. it up. Don't ask me. <laughs> uh. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting these little guys down here. I think I'm actually gonna do dark blue on these. On the reference, I did kind of a yellow, but my yellow stayed more over here, so these being yellow doesn't totally make sense with this color transition. So I'm just gonna switch to my deep blue. Maybe this one will be green. And then this is where you can go along the edge and do like, let's say I wanna do a dark 
value edge of a deep blue. You can just go along like this and you can either leave it or if you want to kind of blend that color out just a little bit, you can. Maybe even do a whole other area where you kind of wet it and then drop in some color. I feel like this edge needs to be darker. Let's make that a dark purple. I agree. Keenan's like, thank goodness I was staring at that. Couldn't stop. Was it driving me nuts? Just kidding. Been saying it for years, <laughs> but not about the painting. <laughs> And I just feel like my dark blue has a pretty hard line. So I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit. And this one, and so sometimes what I'll do, like let's say I wanna do a dark edge of magenta right here, but this is already a really dark value magenta. So me just using straight magenta right there might not actually really do anything. Sometimes I'll take that magenta and do a tiny, tiny bit, tiny bit of purple in there to darken the hue. So then you'll be able to actually have a darker value right there next to the already dark magenta. You see what I'm doing? Yes. So it still gives you that dark value that you're looking for without actually really messing with your colors. Yeah, that feels better. That looks nice. So sometimes when you're trying to really darken that edge, you can, or like an area, just introduce that next hue just a little bit. I'll switch things up for you. Okay. Oh gosh, that blue. Okay, so even, so this is a great example. I got that blue, I went through, I made it darker, I blended it out, but it's still like, I want the edge to be darker than it is. So what I'm going to do to help it is I'm gonna grab blue and a little bit of purple. And let's just see what that does. There we go. See that? Much darker. Darker. Good. I mean, that area is pretty wet, so it moved, but like, Sometimes just a little bit, the next value really helps. Checking, I'm checking all my areas. I think we, I think we did it, Keenan. Nailed Which, it? Yeah. I mean, you can keep messing with this for as long as you want, but I feel pretty good about this. Okay. Oh, I got a water drop. I think it looks great. I love that bloom still up there near the UK. This one? Mm -hmm. That one right across? Yep. I think my favorite area is actually this one. How that green went into that blue. Yeah, moved around on its own. Beautiful. Um, this is it, this is our project. I hope that you had a quiet moment to yourself to kind of refocus and spend some time on you. I know that that's really hard to do with our demanding lives, but it's so important if we wanna really get the most out of life. Um, and you can take this technique and do it with so many different things. You can take silhouettes of things. You can do a skyline if you really love, you know, if you live in New York City, take the skyline in New York City, do a color transition, that make cards cute. out of it, you know, like do a big one and um, write on it or, you know, do little marks where you've been and make goals to do other places because we're traveling the world this month. So. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. And um, if you are on Facebook, you can join our watercolor group. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us in your work. We love to see it. Um, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art Watercolor. And that way you guys can see what everyone else is creating. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Thanks, Keenan. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.